After every Nintendo Direct, I hear the same complaints about the lack of a new F-Zero game. But there's already been one since the launch on the Nintendo Switch. I'm Kutsky, and this is my review of Fast RMX. Get ready! Fast RMX is the third in the futuristic racing series, with the previous instalments being on the Wii and Wii U. The game's a digital download only, which especially for the releases on the previous systems is why I think maybe not many people have heard of them. The game plays somewhere between Wipeout and F-Zero. It's lightning fast with excellent graphics at 1080p docked and 720p handheld and a solid 60 frames a second, which is impressive now, let alone as a launch game on the Switch. The controls cover everything you'd expect from this sub-genre of racer, with floaty ship controls, air brakes and a turbo, but Fast RMX adds its own impression to the genre with the addition of a ship energy colour and power-up zones. Tapping X whilst racing switches your craft between blue and yellow energy modes. The tracks are then laced with both blue and yellow boosts and jump pads. Hit them in the correct ship colour mode to get a boost, however hitting them with the wrong colour selected and you'll be slowed down. This adds a really fun extra layer of strategy that's especially satisfying when you hit a string of rapidly changing pads perfectly. The game contains all the tracks from the previous Wii U game, plus six new original tracks and another six which were added as free DLC after launch, bringing the total number of tracks to 36, which can be raced in three different classes, each increasing in speed and difficulty. Aside from the game's main championship mode, there's also the standard time attack and a hero mode where your boost doubles as a life bar as well, bringing the gameplay even closer in line with F-Zero. The game offers up to four player split screen local multiplayer and up to eight players online. Everything about the game oozes quality and polish, from the gameplay to the graphics to the frame rate, so it shocks me more people don't talk about this to be honest. But then again, I'd pretty much forgotten the game even existed myself until digging way deep into my game library. As I mentioned earlier, this game was actually a launch game for the Switch, which I think explains why it's not on many people's radar. I understand the charm of the characters in F-Zero has a lot of appeal, but if, like me, you're just craving the core F-Zero experience and you're not aware of fast RMX, you need to check this out ASAP. The game still sells for the launch price of £16.99 and I haven't seen it show up in many sales which might again explain for the lack of visibility of the game now, but I can't stress how much it's worth the asking price if you like this genre. And when Nintendo do finally decide to revive the F-Zero franchise, they could do a lot worse than getting the fast RMX developer Shinnan Multimedia to produce the game for them. That's honestly how highly I regard this game. Hope you enjoyed another review. If so, please do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. I know everybody always says that, but it does help. And let me know in the comments which other Nintendo franchises you wish they'd show a little bit more love to. For me, probably Star Fox. I'd even take a remake of Star Fox 64 at this point, but maybe not Star Fox Zero. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Kutsky signing out, keeping the games alive. Catch you soon.